Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Linnea, and for this video, we are going to get ready and chat insecure. So picking up from the last episode, the scene shows Molly inside the Ethiopian restaurant ordering food. We come to discover that she saw Issa, and in her hubris, pretended as if she didn't with the expectation that Issa would enter and start the conversation following their block party showdown. But as we know, Issa chose her well-being over attempting to straighten things out with Molly. This obviously angers Molly, and we cut to the next scene with Andrew speaking in Chinese with his brother about plans as they are taking a couple's trip to Mexico. This is a big step for Molly and Andrew in their relationship to go on their first vacation and then she comes in the apartment mad as hell like come on girl come on Molly. She starts to speak ill of Issa again and says she will not reach out to her since the fight was her fault. And if you remember from the last episode and my last video I talked about how Issa has always been the one to reach out and how she's just not doing it again because Molly was also at fault. She took blame for it and she also said Molly was at fault. But here we have Molly saying, no, it was just straight up Issa's fault. Typical Molly. Anyway, as she's packing, she gets a notification that she has a work meeting that she has to attend tomorrow before their flight. That's that, typical Molly bashing Issa and dealing with work. Next, we cut to Molly going into work, talking about how hotel lotion is watery and for white people, which I think is hilarious because it's true. And if you're on Twitter, you know we talk about this. Anyway, Molly then proceeds to speak poorly towards her assistant who informed her of the meeting too late. And this scene shows that Molly really doesn't have a forgiving nature when it comes to other folks and their mistakes. After her day at work, Molly is running late to the airport and she just makes it in time. Once on the plane, Molly asks if they can have a chill night because you know she had a crazy day at work. And Andrew is hesitant to talk to his brother because he loves Loves a good schedule, his brother does, and his brother planned everything. To which Molly, you know, agrees that it's nice that he planned everything and for once she just decides to go with the flow. So now that they're on vacation, we're got we're starting to see Molly in a different light, so to speak. She's trying to just let go of all of her control issues and just let things be. They both talk about how they, you know, brought special things, alluding to what grown folks do. And then they proceed to touch one another on the plane in anticipation of what's to come. They finally land in Mexico and Molly meets Andrew's brother, Victor, and Andrew's sister-in-law, Lydia. The brothers exchange brotherly jabs and Lydia over compliments Molly and everything seems good at first. Obviously, Molly is the only black woman within their group and I mean, that's to be expected, right? Andrew is Chinese, his brother is obviously Chinese and brother Victor happened to marry a Chinese woman. So while that may seem obvious to me right off the bat, something was not settled in my spirit. Like it just didn't feel right, but we'll get to that a bit later. So they go on to speak about what plans Victor made for the night and Andrew attempts to like rein him in a little bit but Victor responds with devil's advocate and honestly anyone who says that is someone you may want to be wary of. Devils don't need advocates. Moving on. Andrew and Molly are getting ready to head out for the night when Molly pulls out what she's been teasing Andrew with since the plane. She pulls out some lingerie and some oil and Andrew's like, oh, okay, that's what you brought? And Molly's like, well, what did you bring? And Andrew starts pulling out all these toys, some balls, butt plugs. It was super funny how they like, they were on the same page, but they weren't. And they wound up having sex on the balcony. I mean, it's their vacation, who can blame them? This causes them to miss the first night's activities when they show up the next day for their three mile hike slash run. And they finally make it to the top with Victor and Lydia waiting for them. Victor and Lydia seem to be the type that's just kind of like, go, go, go all the time and don't know how to chill, which is kind of a mirror to who Molly is, but more extra. In any case, they get down the hike by zip lining, which reminds me of a time when I zip lined in Costa Rica. It was so much fun. If you ever have the opportunity to do it again once Rona gets the heck up out of here, you should definitely book that. And then they proceed to have a good night, all four of them 
them are out on the town dancing, drinking, eating. It was just a really good time and it made me wish that I could do that right now. Anyway, once back in their room for the night, Andrew returns Nathan's calls. He had missed three calls from him and it turns out that Issa is with Nathan since we hear her in the background being totally Issa talking about, oh, is that a skip it? Anyway, this of course sets Molly off down her typical path of disparaging Issa, but this time she also talks super poorly of Nathan, which I find odd since Nathan is her man's good friend. She goes on to say how Issa loves mess in her life and Nathan is a mess, to which Andrew has to put her in her place by letting her know she doesn't have all the facts and that Nathan had some mental health issues that he was dealing with that she didn't know about. And once again, the voice of reason Andrew reminds Molly that Issa is not on this trip with them and to let it go. So we cut to the next scene. Andrew, Molly, and Lydia are in the pool and a passerby splashes Lydia in the eye. So Molly offers to go get her a towel. The towel lady asks to see Molly's key card in order to give her a towel and Molly says she doesn't have one. She's like, oh, I just got out of the pool. Like, I don't have one. But the lady was super persistent on needing to see Molly's key card. And even when Molly points out that the white couple before her didn't have to show their key card. This conversation starts to escalate and it gets to the point where Victor is passing by to meet them and he sees what's happening and he just pulls out his key card and the woman goes to give him a towel and Molly grabs it from her like, girl, give me that damn towel and walks away. So now they're back, they're all at the pool and Andrew senses something is off with Molly and Victor chimes in to say the towel lady was being super serious about her job, which Molly retorts, yeah, in a selectively racist way. Victor tries to play devil's advocate and question if it was really about race. Andrew starts telling his brother in Chinese to chill and Molly is like, um, I'm still here so let's speak in English. And then she goes to say that Victor doesn't get it, to which he retorts, you don't think I experience racism? And proceeds to say how he reacts to it is his choice and Molly doesn't have to give it so much power basically insinuating that Molly is making it a bigger deal than it needs to be, which is very, very unfair and absolutely inaccurate. Molly goes off and says that Asian people only consider themselves people of color when it's beneficial to them. And everyone is like, whoa, even Andrew's like, I don't think like that. To which Molly replies that he's different. Now that could come across as bad, but before she even has a chance to explain or further flesh out her feelings, Victor chimes in again and suggests that she only gives the benefit of the doubt to certain people. And that's when Molly was like, she's done. Victor was clearly gaslighting her and she promptly tells Victor to fuck off and leaves the pool with Andrew following closely behind. Molly and Andrew then go to bed in an awkward silence and she wakes up alone to having found out that Andrew had went out already and gotten them smoothies. They chat about the day's activities and Molly asks if they're going to meet up with Victor and Lydia later, to which Andrew says no as they'll be shopping inside the city. She wonders if she messed things up between all of them and Andrew says that he talked to his brother earlier in the morning and that he told him he was wrong and Andrew says that Victor is sorry about how he acted. I think maybe he's not telling the whole truth here because I doubt after everything Victor said he would automatically own up to an apology. This was his belief. In any case, the next scene cuts to Molly alone on the beach calling her therapist who she hasn't seen in a long time because she recognizes that she has issues letting and go with things and decides to make an appointment. The vacation is now over and Molly and Andrew run into Lawrence who they found out had just come back from San Francisco. They exchange awkward pleasantries and then Lawrence leaves and he makes a mysterious phone call to someone telling them that he's been thinking about them and that he hopes that they can get drinks. Then it cuts to black and the show is over. I'm so happy Lawrence is back and he's been gone the last three episodes and maybe now we'll get some answers on what's to become of him and Issa. It should be especially interesting now that Nathan is in the picture. Here's my final look. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought of this episode and I'll see you next week.